Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Trash Talk on Flying Circus, where I talk about the planes in the book. In this episode, let's talk about the rest of the students' planes, as I have already talked about the Tiger Chanel's Mammut, you can check it at the following link instead. So, student planes are like dreams, most of them crash and burn, all of them feature ideas that are decades ahead of their time, and often, also need decades to become viable at all. The most prominent one is probably the Jernsback Experiment 0012, designed by Dr. Jernsback who believes that a conflict in Himmelgard is imminent, likely against the forces of the Goth armies, believing the future of flight lies in smooth airframe, pressurized cockpits, and freaking laser beam, he designs his machine based on those ideas. The Jernsback Experiment 0012, whether the 12 stands for serial number or model number, is really one mean machine, it has both collimated and telescopic gun sight, some armor, gun cam to automatically confirm kill, and a gigantic laser gun. Not a heat ray machine gun, a heat ray light repeating cannon that doesn't suffer from awkward that can also fire 10 shots with charges from the alternator and batteries before needing to be recharged, as long as you don't rapid fire it and empty the whole batteries in one go. Add in the dual gun sight, it's really hard to miss with it, but since heat ray modification reduces the weapon AP by one, you might find some targets to be harder to shoot down than normal. That's not all. The plane is quite agile with high speed, high overspeed, reliable engine, high fuel range, and durable frame, all the traits you want for an energy fighter, plus, you get to sit inside a glass cockpit, reducing your stress. The problem however, is that it has too much crap, making it ridiculously expensive, giving it dangerously high stall speed, and turn bleed too, you also could barely see anything with all the wings in the way. The first thing you should do with this thing is take something off it, anything, probably the armor, but that might make it a little too fragile for something this expensive. As for the variation, number 11 has extreme positive stagger for its wing, which makes it a lot more stable but lower its handling, number 10 has an addition of retractable gear which reduces the drag enough to increase its max speed but makes it heavier, number 9 has a freaking ejection seat, massively increasing your survivability if it goes down but you are not getting your plane back if that happens. And finally, number 7 has a freaking conventional covered heavy cannon instead, which will definitely make anything go down if it hits, if. Now that you have seen the Jernsback experiment, you are probably wondering what amazing things the other two planes can do. Well, they might amaze you, just in ways you are not expecting. This is Das Gegen by Spiel, which well, give me a moment. Yeah. This plane was originally designed by Vera Moss, who tried to impress her demanding professor by designing a machine that attempted to reinvent every aspect of aircraft design. It flew for 15 minutes before flipping and crashing, and it's no wonder why. Negative 8 stability, negative, goddamn, 8. If you want to fly this thing, you need a student with high comm, no, you demand a student with high comm because otherwise you will quickly get a pile of scrap and a well-dressed corpse. The upside, it's fast, agile, and durable, with a high visibility because almost nothing gets in your line of sight and it has a decent price tag. It also has a punt gun because if you pick any student stat block with high comm, you can't hit shit anyway. But when it's time to upgrade the firepower or engine, oh boy this can carry a lot, like a lot, before reaching turn bleed too. One more thing, as many people try to make this damn thing work, you could definitely make some minor adjustments and talk to your GM in accepting these changes as long as they are reasonable changes. All in all, if you can fly this thing, it can work very well, if not, it will work for 5 minutes, your life will also end in those minutes, I recommend parachute. Next is the Universitat Cobra M01, it's a final year project, it's literally a final year project for engineering students who uses the Theller Cobra as an experiment platform, and in recent years, the idea of tandem annular wings has captured the imagination of the aerodynamics community. Annular wings are basically these weird closed loop wings, and the word tandem stands for having two pairs of wings at front and rear of the aircraft. There's a reason for the weird looking closed loop wings, in a conventional aircraft, they need to deal with a thing called wingtip vortices, essentially tiny tornadoes forming from the wingtips, these can cause a lot of drag, like a lot more than you would expect. So, some engineers figure, to prevent wingtip vortices, why not just make it so that there aren't any wingtips in the first place? While closed loop wing did bring in large drag reductions, it ultimately didn't bring in significant aerodynamic advantage over conventional wing aircraft, and that's why we have more boring looking planes these days. But, to put it shortly, 
This thing is a Feller Cobra but somehow even more stable and thus has probably one of the worst handling for scout planes ever. It's so stable, standard procedure for spin recovery is just let go of the control, and it's still very fast, more durable than your standard Cobra, still has two machine guns, and decently priced. The only problem aside from the sluggish handling, is that you are effectively blind from all the wings. As for its variations, it has the lucky variant which has the Bertha F1466 Uber engine with 10 more horsepower, making it faster in exchange for lower reliability, the hindsight variant which cut holes in the hull and wings so you could actually see something, and finally, use more gun. a variant which replaces the machine guns with a single mechanical action like repeating cannon with extra ammo. What is mechanical action, it's essentially a gun driven by the motor instead, let's go back in history a bit to the time when Austro-Hungarian Empire is still a thing. Schwarzlos machine gun is the primary medium machine gun used by the Austro-Hungarian army throughout World War I, it's cheap to manufacture, reliable, good enough for ground troops or emplacement. The problem came when the military tried to put it on airplanes, because due to its delayed blowback action, there's a significant lag between pulling the trigger and firing the bullet, making the gun near impossible to be synchronized and unsafe to be fired through the propellers. It's why they have this weird wing gun pot on one of their planes, because otherwise they are gonna shoot themselves down. Seeing the issue, Ferenc Gebauer, a gun designer, figures that the solution to this problem is just make a gun driven by the engine action itself, automatically synchronizing it. The result of this is the Gebauer machine cannons, which has a staggering fire rate of 1500 rounds per minute, to put it in perspective, the Schwarzlos, and also a bunch of other machine guns at the time, have a fire rate of 400 to 800 RPM. Unfortunately, look at the year of the model and look at the year when World War I ended, it didn't really get used. After the war, Gebauer made several new designs of motor-driven guns, but most of them were deemed too complicated and unreliable because they all look like diesel-powered clockwork. In Flying Circus, any weapons with mechanical action modification is automatically synchronized, allowing it to shoot between propellers without problem, and the more RPM the engine is running, the more bullets you will fire per burst, this doesn't increase your damage however, but it does make your shot more concentrated. However, you can wear out the engine upon rolling one with open fire, and if the engine dies, you can't fire the weapon anymore. This does mean that the amount of ammo you expend with each open fire move is fully dependent on how hard you are pushing your engine, so watch this number carefully before you fire, you might end up emptying your whole ammo load. To simply put, with the Universitat Cobra M01, you basically cannot spin out with this thing, it's just that it might be a bit hard to outturn anything with it. And that's all on the student planes, from the overly complicated Jernsback experiment 0012 that probably has too much stuff stuck on it, the lethal Doskagen Bispiel that has the potential to be good if you can survive flying it, the overly stable Universitat Cobra M01 with a truly radical design, and the loud Tiger Schnell's Mammut that can outrun practically anything and get away quickly after unleashing its payload. Anyway, that's all for now, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.